Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to today's video, which is gonna just be a casual short little video where I find out if I completed last year's buzzword reading challenge. If you are not familiar with Kayla from the channel Books and Lala, she does a reading challenge every year. It originally started as a readathon that she hosted on a regular basis, centered around books with certain buzzwords in the title. She then adapted it to be a year long reading challenge where every month there is a different word or group of words that you are challenged to find in book titles and read those books. I have not intentionally participated in this challenge in the past few years that it's been going on, but I have always thought it's a very interesting concept and I wanted to find out if I have inadvertently completed the challenge within the last year. One of the great things about this challenge is Kayla is very lenient in the rules. She does not police other people's reading. She doesn't even police how the challenge should be completed. Some people like to treat it as a readathon every month where they spend a week or however long reading books with the buzzword. Other people just try to read a book with the buzzword once a month. And some people I think also like Kayla just try to hit the words throughout the year without thinking about it too much or even really intending to do it. So I have all of 2022's buzzwords written out and I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll through my Goodreads and see if I've read books with these words in the title. I guess to give us some structure, I can come up with a little point system. Let's say I get one point if I have read a book with the given buzzword at all in the year of 2022 and then two points if I have read that book within the actual month that that was the buzzword for, if that makes sense. I'm not gonna count duplicates if I have multiple books that fit, but this way there's a little bit of structure and I can get a maximum of 24 points this way. So let's start with January where the buzzwords are who, what, where, when, why, and how. I'm pretty certain that I have definitely read a book with one of those words throughout 2022, but let's see if I did in January. Okay, I only read six books in January of last year and I don't think any of them fit. I have since which is close, but not quite. So let's keep scrolling and see when my first book that actually fits was read. Okay, in March, I read Who is Maude Dixon by Alexandra Andrews. It's a thriller that I really enjoyed. I give it four stars. And for that, I get one point. In February, the buzzwords were me and you and other similar pronoun type words. Nothing is coming to mind that I might have read. She did say she would count like she or he or him or her or we or us. Oh, in February, I did. I read Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I also read For Your Own Good, which I think your would count. So that's exciting. Two points for February. The March buzzword was locations, so that's very broad. And let's see what I read. I read The Space Between Worlds in February, which space? borderline a location. In February, I also read The Tattooist of Auschwitz, which is definitely a location. But let's look at March. Clara and the Sun. Is the sun a location? No. <laughs> Uh, there's someone inside your house. Would you say your house is a location? Questionable. I'm gonna say no. I don't think I had any location words in March, but I definitely had uh, some other books that fit like the Paris apartment in April. So we're gonna give one point. Speaking of April, the buzzwords for that month were words that had to do with big or little. I'm not sure. Definitely nothing in April that fits that, but let's keep scrolling and see what else I can find. In the tall grass, I read in May, if you would consider tall similar to big. It looks like not until October I read Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. That definitely fulfills this, so I will get one point for April. Okay, similarly in May, the category was directions, so that could be north, south, east, west. It could be up, down, left, right. I definitely don't think I have north, south, east, west, but I may have other directional words, and I'm gonna have to scroll for a bit. When the sky fell on splendor. I don't think that's quite it. Fell is not a directional word. The book of two ways. I don't think way is quite what we're looking for, but close. Carrie Soto is back. Would you say back is a directional word? This is tough when there's so much room for interpretation. The house across the lake. I feel like across is getting much closer to the realm of where we want to be for directional words. A house at the bottom of a lake. I do think bottom is also really close to what we're looking for. Okay, I'm not sure about this one. I think I'm gonna have to give myself like a half point because I think I'm stretching it a little bit. Though I know she encourages being creative and stretching the words, but we're gonna go with half. In June, the buzzword is all. And I think it's the only month where it's literally one word. That is the buzzword. You either have it or you don't. In February, I read Ophelia After All, so definitely one point for sure, but let's look in June specifically. Okay, another one up for debate. I read Falling by TJ Newman. The word all is within falling, but I don't think that's what she's looking for, so I'm not gonna count it for two points, unless you can all convince me that I should. Otherwise, it doesn't look like I read any books with the word 
all in the title in June. So we're gonna say Ophelia after all will count for one point. In July, the buzzword is bookish words. So that is pretty vague. Obviously book would work, but also like library, pages, reading, bookshop. Let's see what I can find. Oh, the woman in the library I read in July. I'm definitely counting that. That would be two points. Also, I did enjoy that book and I don't get a ton of opportunities to talk about it. Okay, in August, the buzzword is items and objects. I'm gonna be surprised if I don't have any books that fit this in August, but let's see. Okay, we've got notes on an execution. I feel like notes is a pretty clear object. I also read any man and a man is definitely an object. And also the school for good mothers, a school is also an object. It's also a place, but also an object. So I'm gonna say I get two points for that. In September, the buzzword is light and dark and any word that you can associate with that. This one is gonna be tough. I have the last to vanish. And if I really wanted to, I could say vanish is like going into the dark. I also read when the sky fell on splendor in September and sky, I feel like has a lot to do with light and darkness. This is so hard you guys to be the one making the decisions all by myself. I also read sundial in November and the sun it's definitely light, but do I have anything even clearer? Oh, okay, in January I read A Flicker in the Dark, which is like one of the actual buzzwords, so I think I'm gonna have to go with that and just give myself one point. In October, the buzzword is creatures and animals, and as someone who doesn't read fantasy and also doesn't really love animals that much, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have anything that fits this. But let's go ahead and look at October. Oh, Ghost Squad. That definitely counts, right? A ghost is a creature. And I also read In the Company of Witches, which is our creatures. I feel like this counts and it's nice that this landed in October. I think that was intentional, but if I was ever going to read paranormal, spooky, creature-filled books, I guess it would be this month. So, will give me two points. In November, the buzzword was any word that ends in ing, which I know I did earlier in the month. Like I said, I read Falling by TJ Newman. That definitely counts, but let's check November specifically. No, it doesn't look like I have anything else in November that ended in ing. So we're just gonna get one point for falling. And then December, the buzzword is numbers, which I know I read in the year, but I don't know about in December. No, it looks like nothing in December, but I did read Book of a Thousand Days in September and One Word Kill also in September and The Book of Two Ways also in September. This would have been a much better buzzword for September, but for all of those, I'm going to get one point. So assuming I am okay in my little stretches here and there, I ended up with 15 and a half points. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I hit more of these than I thought I would. I think only four of them were actually in the assigned month, but again, I didn't intentionally do any of this. So it's kind of fun to look and see that these books being buzzwords, they actually do show up in my reading naturally quite a bit. So now I'm wondering if I should intentionally do this in 2023 or if I should do a similar thing next year and look back and see if I naturally and accidentally hit the buzzwords again. I don't know, let me know your thoughts on that and what I should do for this challenge going forward. Also, please let me know if you participate in the buzzword reading challenge every year or if you participated in the readathons back when they were more formally structured readathons and whether you participated or not, if you want to go ahead and use my points system. Go back and look at your reading if you track the books you read every year. See how many of the buzzwords you actually hit. Give yourself an extra point if it was in the assigned month. And let me know how many points you ended up with with that point system. And we can compare and just talk about this as a fun reading challenge. Also, just for the record, I did read 175 books last year, which I would personally consider a lot. So I definitely had a lot of titles to choose from. And I can see how if you read fewer books in a year, it obviously makes it much less likely that you hit these buzzwords without intending to. But again, just a fun thing to kind of compare and talk about. Thank you to Kayla for creating this reading challenge. Again, I find it a very interesting concept and I love looking for buzzwords on my shelves or in my past reading to notice trends and things like that. Other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.